Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Bill Hussain Hay. I'm a gastroenterologist in King's College Hospital in London. It's my great pleasure to kick off this session, a poem to current insights on poem for complex diseases. I'm uh, very grateful to the course organizers and Professor Inoue for, for the invitation. Um, we have a number of great speakers this morning. Uh, I have uh, joining us uh, in the chair's uh, role is uh, uh, Minami Sensei Hitomi Minami, um, and uh, Inoue Sensei is is uh, watching over us uh, all. Um, so, without further ado, my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, uh, Nikos Eleftheriadis from Salonika in Greece. Uh, Nikos is the is the is a good friend uh, of ours and of Shaw University. Um, he is the president of the Greek Society for Echalasia and has over 250 uh, medical publications, scientific uh, and medical publications. Uh, he's a very distinguished and uh, experienced therapeutic endoscopist, um, particularly for achalasia and its indications. And uh, today I can think of uh, no one better to give a talk on poem in complex achalasia and other complex uh, esophageal motility disorders. Uh, Nikos, thank you very much. Yes. Uh... Hello to everybody, dear chairman. Uh, thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation and a great honor to be included in this exciting uh, meeting. Uh, my uh, topic is about uh, uh, poem for complex achalasia patients. And as we all know, uh, a poem which is the endoscopic equivalent of surgical myotomy, which was initially performed by open surgery in the era of laparoscopy laparoscopically, in the last 13 years, endoscopically by poem, is an established accepted treatment option for achalasia worldwide. And the proof is that so many publications uh, in PubMed and Internet while there are very few studies about POEM for complex achalasia patients. And the view of absence of consensus about treatment algorithm for achalasia, you have this very interesting proposed algorithm where POEM is proposed as best treatment option for type 3 or uh, achalasia or distance of as well. Whether there is no recommendation about complex achalasia in this thing. And uh, as we know, there is not a currently available treatment option who can change the natural history of achalasia. So, an achalasia is left untreated. So, a simple achalasia type 1, 2, or 3 will become an end stage achalasia like sigmoid type 1 or 2, like that, and mega esophagus. And I will present some of my personal poem case series in, for complex achalasia in Greece. And here is a first case, it's a 74 years old male with 35 years history of achalasia left untreated, came with severe dysphagia and uh, uh, sigmoid mega esophagus. Balloon dilatations, uh, of course, uh, uh, failed to solve the situation, and while serious comorbidities and absolute contraindications uh, made a uh, patient to refuse surgery. So, what was on the 15 like that? Very thick mass layer, the item was completed one day in the hospital, and then rapid passes through the sigmoid type 2, achalasia, and then patient eating and drinking well, and six years later, he continues to drink and eat everything. This second case, 79 years old man, 40 years of achalasia, more severe than the previous case. At this time, complete dysphagia, very severe mega esophagus. Botox, is a Botox injections at this time fail to solve the problem. And then poem again, this is only a part of this mega esophagus. Esophagus was very uh, uh, huge. Uh, uh, this particular case, we had severe some mucosal fibrosis. However, we managed to complete tunnel and myotomy with this fibrotic area, probably due to Botox injections. Uh, three years later, patient can eat and drink almost well. This is another case, 62 years female, who have a allergy for surgery. Yeah, so for, uh, uh, this particular case, the experienced group of surgeons uh, had complications. This is not only failed, because, but it's also complicated. 
with mucosal perforation and abscess, and after many interventions, patient recovered, but dysphagia remained. So she came for POEM because patient has refused to reoperate again. Here, like that, it has tropics within the tunnel, sigmoid, and very huge. Three years later, she can eat and drink everything. This is another case. It's a Fell Keller, 49 years old, male with a halasia. 15 years ago, he underwent uh, uh, Heller, my door by uh, my autumn, and then now a halasia reattacked again, sigmoid esophagus, and the interesting finding was the barred esophagus, like that here, despite dorf and duplication. Poem, of course, solved the situation like that. This is a post nissen halasia patient, 41 years old, uh, uh, from uh, nissen. Uh, for me, the diagnosis has refractory again. However, soon after, he had complete dysphagia. Uh, Halasia was diagnosed thereafter, and then poem like that. And here is a 79 years old male with multiple large esophageal diverticulum, poem long myota, more than 22 centimeters. And then it's a 39 years old female with multiple episodes of dysphagia from childhood. Uh, referred uh, for poem acid deduction from structure, so however, congenital esophageal ring was diagnosed because it was a ring like stenosis two centimeters above the deduction. We managed to complete tuner myotin within this fibrotic area. However, we have this mucosal tear, which, however, resulted in mucosal perforation. Clip was not sufficient, so we had to place a fully covered metallic stent immediately. The diagnosis was immediate. And so, patient, after three weeks, we removed the stent. The mucosal uh, opening was closed and uh, the stenosis was calibrated. Three years later, she can eat and drink everything, this young lady. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can continue our discussions up to 76 complex achalasia from 145 successful points in my hospital at the moment, from 2013 up to now. Uh, we are very happy that we have 100% possibility, no deaths, serious complications. I, I already present the one, and less than 7% might get. This is the publication of our 100 successful poems from our center. And uh, actually, in all these uh, cases, poem was actually the only realistic therapeutic option of Allen who can give this solution in uh, cases where all other treatments failed or contraindicated. And of course, poem, uh, according to our results, which is in accordance to international experience and standards, poem is a feasible, safe, and effective treatment for complex achalasia case. But for me, the main uh, conclusion is that we have to, to apply POEM immediately after initial diagnosis in easy cases as first treatment option before giving time to Achalasia to progress for a simple easy case type 1 or 3 to a complex stage sigmoid megaesophagus when treatment became limited, difficult, or even impossible. And the outcome of POEM, of course, again, would be not the optional. And remember, Botox destroys some mucosal space and produces some mucosal fibrosis. Balloon dilatations push a halasia to end stage and made the simple the complex. Keller Dorfan duplication alters aggressively the esophageal anatomy and does not prevent 100% of barred esophagus. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will finish my talk with the statement of acid Greek philosopher, the again is the cynic, who said to Briat Alexander, Don't deprive me of what you can't give me. Don't deprive Achalasia patients for high quality poem myotomy and long term solution while you can't change the natural history of Achalasia. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Arigato. Thank you very much indeed for that wonderful talk. Um, I, I have a number of questions, but we're going to keep the discussion to the end of the session. Um, I would like to introduce our next speaker now, uh, Dr. Roberto Marcelli, Professor Roberto Marcelli from uh, Milan in Italy. Uh, Roberta is a, is a therapeutic endoscopist and uh, gives some very fantastic live demonstrations. Uh, we've seen her um, perform many times uh, on live endoscopy. She's a very experienced therapeutic endoscopist. And like, in fact, like the whole panel now, we are alumni of Shore University um, all of us have had the benefit of, of training with uh, Professor Inoue. Um, and so now Roberta is going to give us a very specific uh, scenario of, of, of a discussion of poem after bariatric surgery. Uh, welcome, uh, Roberta. 
Uh, hello, hello to everybody. Thank you for this really kind words, Bo, and it's a very honor to me to be here and to give this presentation. I will just now try to share my screen and uh, I will start with the presentation. So yeah, I have a, this specific topic that is the poem after bariatric surgery because I've seen uh, many cases and I would like to share with you what's in the literature and what we can do in these cases. I want to start with the clinical cases. This is a female, uh, 42 years old, uh, and uh, she undergone a laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy in 2019. And they referred me this patient just really two days ago. Uh, she had a weight loss now at 29. Uh, so the BMI is 29 in two years. But then uh, she started developing uh, dysphagia and regurgitation two years after poem. So we can make some clinical suspicious. What's there? There's any stenosis of the junction. Maybe there's stenosis of, you know, in the middle of this, this leaf that sometimes can happen. Maybe it's a reflux esophagitis. And this is, I will show you the barium swallow that they sent me. So definitely there's something there. So I want to start from these clinical cases. I've not yet seen the patient, so I can't say honestly what's on the manometry, what I will find the gast on the uh, gastroscopy, so we'll see this patient. But this is the start to understand that there's a, a clinical relationship between bariatric surgery and uh, achalasia or motility disorder in general. But it's an unclear relationship because we, we doesn't know still now uh, what is happening in this patient. We know that on one side that obesity is known to be associated with esophageal motility disorder. And uh, uh, we can, somebody has already hypothesized that post-surgical damage may trigger achalasia. So maybe there's something there that is happening after surgery. We know uh, overall that uh, this unclear relationship uh, has already tried to be demonstrated uh, and uh, to be understood uh, more in deeply. Uh, we had this patient recently published in 2020. is a retrospective study on 97 patients that they undergone on HR manometry after surgery, and they found a real diagnosis of achalasia in 70% in 7 of patients. But you know that dysphagia symptoms were found in up to 14 patients. So there's, there's something there, as we are saying, but at the same time, this relationship is still unclear. So we don't know what is really happened. Uh, let's try to understand what's in the literature about the different type of bariatric procedure, because uh, uh, there's no one type of uh, bariatric surgery. This is the uh, RUNI gastric bypass. So uh, there was first demonstrated poem in uh, 2014 by Dr. Draganov. And he said that in this case, uh, the poem is technically challenging because uh, there's difficulties in extend the tunnel in the gastric side for the fibrosis. We have a small gastric pouch that may facilitate regurgitation, but at the same time, remember that the gastric uh, bypass is an efficient anti-reflux procedure. So there's less concern about GERD post poem. And also the tortuosity and surgical suture in the dissection plane can really make the tunnel and the procedure itself very challenging. Uh, in literature, we have, uh, let's say, small series or even case reports. We have a series of 10 patients with a clinical success of 100%. Again, a small series of six patients uh, with clinical success in five on six. And uh, the, light, the latest one is just a series of three patients. What's again after sleep gastrectomy, it's similar case the, of the first one that I show you at the beginning. Uh, generally, you know that after in sleep gastrectomy, you remove the fundus and part of the body of the stomach. So we could uh, uh, find an important fibrosis in Ascaric at the junction that make you very challenging and difficult the tunnel. And then remember that in case of GERD after POEM, uh, it will be very difficult because in this case, it's not possible to add any anti-reflux uh, procedure because the fundus is still not there. 
So uh, in literature, we found three poems after slick gastectomy with 100% of technical success. But if we look at the clinical success, only two on three. I know that three patients is not enough to say anything. We are just at the beginning of this experience. So definitely we need more data. Uh, what I can show you is a personal case that I've done in a female of 66 years old. This was not a slick gastrectomy, but something different and a little bit challenging because the patient underwent in 1990 a laparoscopic vertical gastroplasty. So definitely you have a staple. And in this particular patient, we have an asymptomatic gastrogastric fistula between the new pouch and the, let's say, the real fundus. Then we have the so-called neopalorus, that is where usually they put a band from outside. So we enter in the junction, we have a small pouch, then we found the gastrogastric fistula, the neopalorus, and when you enter in the real antrum and you retroflex, you will see the neopalorus and the fundus. But you know that uh, she developed 20 years after surgery, a very worsening dysphagia and severe symptoms. So the Edgar score for this patient when they sent her to me was 10 on 12. Um, the HR show an achalasia type with an IRP of 19. And I will show you the video from the um, barium. So we have the fistula here, the neopouch, the neopalorus, and uh, now I'll show you in a second the gastroscopy and the poem procedure. So while entering in the junction, we will find on our left side, the gastrogastric fistula, and we can, it's so big that we can enter in the gastric fundus. Coming back, we found the pouch, and then the so-called neopalorus, where the band is, and then when we retroflex, this is the real parolus. Yeah, here we found the gastric fundus and the neopalorus. And the gastrogastric fistula seen in retroflexion. I will go a little bit faster. Otherwise, I won't stay in the minutes that you gave me because seven minutes is not very long. So the poem was a standard poem. I honestly didn't find so many difficulties in performing this poem unless to understand the real landmarks in the gastro esophageal junction, because in this particular case is of, uh, uh, and this is one of my main take home message, you can't in all the cases retroflex in the, uh, in the stomach while performing the tunnel. And you can really see the cushion and the bumper in the, in the gastric side to be sure that you arrive and reach the gastric side, because in most of the cases, for example, in these cases or after sleep gastrectomy, you can retroflex in the stomach because the pouch is so small that you have no this chance. So you must uh, uh, see and check the cushion in anterograde fashion, as in this case. But you have no other chance. And this is one of the main limitations. For the, all the others, uh, honestly, I have done very few cases, just three, two after sleep gastrectomy, and this was maybe the uh, most uh, nice one to, to, be to be demonstrated and to be shown, but I didn't find any real technical uh, difficulties other than the impossibility to retroflex in the gastric pouch. Uh, after three, uh, 36 months, so it's now three years, the EGA score is just one with no reflux symptoms. So just thinking outside the box, and this is just my last slides, uh, they published two years ago a gastric poem for the treatment of gastric stenosis post laparoscopic gastrectomy. We know that is not so rare, although there are, in the literature there's not many papers talking about this. And this is just a case report, but just thinking outside, the poem may represent a minimal invasive approach, making the tunnel in a gastric side and try to opening the stricture down by the sleep gastrectomy. So just to conclude, I can say that is technically feasible, 
So with encouraging early outcomes, but they're just early and very, very small. So definitely we need larger series with long-term follow-up. And just remember that mainly after the gastrectomy, good after POEN can be really an issue, an issue because uh, there's no anterior flux procedure that can be done later. Thank you. And I will remember our group, Women in Endoscopy. Well, thank you thank very much. much. Uh... I'm going to, I'm, I'm, uh, for the final session, going to hand over to my co-chair and uh, thanks very much, Roberta. Thank you, Boo. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Minami, Dr. Hitomi Minami from Nagasaki University Hospital, and uh, I'm going to introduce the last speaker of the session. So, uh, Dr. Raina Fujiyoshi will present the topic, a uh, poem in uh, EG Junction Outflow Obstruction on behalf of great Dr. Grace Santi, who is very unfortunately um, can't join this session today. So she is a medical doctor from the Philippines and graduated from De La Salle Health Sciences Institute in 2014. And from April 2018, she moved to Tokyo to the Professor Inouye's department, the guest, uh, the Digestive Disease Center, Showa University Koto Toyos Hospital, and has been trained uh, under Professor Inoue. And to date, she remains to be a core member of the team. And I'm very happy to announce that she got married very recently to one of the members of the team. So congratulations, Dr. Fujiyoshi. Please start the lecture. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Minami, for the kind introduction. And uh, I'm a former student of Dr. Grace Santi, and I'll be presenting on her behalf. And she wants to extend her regards to um, Dr. Bu, Dr. Minami, Dr. Nicholas, Dr. Roberta, and Dr. Uh, Professor Inoue. And she hopes to see you all someday. So I'll share my screen. So EGJOO is quite a rare and newly described entity. Little is known about, about its incidents, etiology, and the most suitable treatment. In this short presentation, we will review the available literature on this subject and present a case with EGJO who underwent POEM. In the latest iteration of the Chicago classification, EGJO is defined as elevated IRP with evidence of preserved peristalsis, presence of clinically relevant symptoms, and positive results on time barium esophagram and or flip. POEM has established itself as a minimally invasive LES-targeted therapy for management of achalasia. However, its role in um, non-achalasia esophageal dysmotility disorders such as EGJOO remains poorly defined. A gamut of treatments including balloon dilation, Botox, surgical myotomy had been reported from multiple case series, including a cohort where no treatment was offered and spontaneous resolution was observed. Botox injection being the most popular treatment and over the past five years, PBD being the first line of treatment. We present a 56 year old male. His symptom was predominantly dysphagia with intermittent vomiting. The baseline symptom score was seven out of 12. The esophagram showed a non-dilated esophagus with tapering at the LES associated with retention of the contrast material along the length of the esophageal body. On high resolution manometry, the swallows were propagated, but the IRP was markedly elevated at 33 millimeters mercury. Pneumatic balloon dilation was offered and done in this patient, which provided minimal improvement in the patient's symptoms. Hence, after discussing the rarity of his condition, risks and benefits of available treatments, he opted to get endoscopic myotomy or POEM. Dr. Santi's team saw this patient in 2016 when no guidelines on curative treatments were available for EGJOO. So they thought it would be reasonable to do PBD, keeping in view the possibility of doing POEM should the patient not improve. So as mentioned, minimal improvement in symptoms after PVD. So POEM um, following the standard technique was planned two months thereafter. So they performed an anterior um, myotomy and the myotomy length on the esophageal side is 10 centimeters. On the gastric side is three centimeters. 
and no complications were noted. They were able to follow up this patient for three years. So three days after poem, the patient had zero symptoms and was able to eat without any difficulty. The Eckhart score remained significantly low in the last three years to follow up, although some heartburn was reported a year after poem. Mild esophagitis was seen after three years. Of note, the patient gained a total of 15 kilograms three years after poem with BMI of 23. Whether this uh, has some contribution to development of reflu reflux symptoms is unknown. Complete and smooth passage of contrast into the stomach was seen post poem as seen in this radiograph. Follow up high, high resolution manometry done two years after poem showed decrease in IRP from 33 to 11 and also not shown pH studies at this time is also normal. The results of Dr. Santi's team are compatible with the outcome in a multi-center pilot study recently reported about POEM for EGJOO, including 55 patients. In this study, clinical success rate was 94% and a significant difference in the pre and post POEM mean IRP was observed. Moreover, our colleagues from Johns Hopkins, which followed, followed up 15 patients with EGJOO, also reported marked improvements in symptom scores and IRP with 87% clinical success. In conclusion, POEM can be a safe and effective treatment option for EGJOO who meet the criteria and the need for prospective studies with larger sample size is warranted. Thank you very much for the kind attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Raina. Uh, so can can we move on to the to the discussion session? Okay, so um, how do we? Uh, if there are any comments or questions from the uh, doctors, uh, or yeah, I have a question first for uh, Nikos um, in order of the uh, presentations. I have to, to lose the the, the view. Yeah, Nikos, can you hear me? I hear you. I yeah, hear, but I no problem. Uh, something happened here. How, how, it's how okay. I... Don't worry. Um, just, just I, I would ask you. You, your, I, I noticed your images for your procedures. You all use the posterior approach in all of your cases. Is this something routine for you, or is it specifically for these complex cases you choose a posterior uh, myotomy? Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, no, it is not only posterior. I have performed more than 20 uh, anterior poems. And the last uh, poems is posterior. Uh, in uh, complex achalasia cases, uh, it would be more easy to go posteriorly, more effective, uh, because I don't have many uh, possibilities. If anterior poem fails, you can go posteriorly, but if posterior poem phase in complex achalasia, then it would be a little bit more difficult to uh, for anterior poem. Uh, no, not uh, case by case. Uh, case by case. Uh, uh, mainly posterior, uh, posterior. Of course, in uh, uh, sigmoid mega esophagus or complex achalasia, it is so changed the anatomy. So it is not so easy to say posterior lateral or posterior. Uh, I, I choose uh, uh, the, uh, the more uh, convenient to my movements, for endoscopic movement, to uh, reach the G-junction and uh, complete the myotomy one centimeter below. Uh, it will, actually, these cases is, are very difficult because we don't have the opportunity of uh, double, uh, double endoscope uh, technique. Uh, to control if we reach the disease or not. So we have to, uh, to be slow by slow and uh, controlling. Otherwise, you can lose the, the direction within the submucosal space. I, uh, so I don't know why I can't. I can, uh, this is my uh, uh, posterior is uh, for me more uh, easy, I think, more safe, I think. Um, if if uh, I've 
just one question for Roberta as well. I, I, this is a I, this is a fantastic case that you presented. Uh, I'm really really intrigued by this. It's very very complicated anatomy. Um, <laughs> Me too. I love complicated anatomy because yeah. at first you have to understand which is the anatomy after bariatric surgery. It's something yeah. new, and then you have yeah, to yeah. you know, compromise with what you find. Do you do you uh, do you are you recognizing the seven, because seven percent aplasia after bariatric surgery is it, that's very high, right? I mean, yeah. Why 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 do you see this in your practice? Um, yeah. Maybe we're missing so much because you know, frankly, I don't I haven't seen many cases. Maybe one case I've seen so far. You know that from a pure gastroenterological point of view. I think that we are missing something. I don't know exactly what. I don't have any real and uh, um, sure answer. But you know that if you look at the guidelines for bariatric surgery, in the, um, in the workup that the, the patient do uh, before surgery, it's not so clear if they have to undergo just a gastroscopy or a barium swallow to understand not only the anatomy, but also the, uh, the shape and the motility of the gut. So some of the patient gone just gastroscopy, some others uh, um, barium swallow, uh, because they want to check for something abnormal in the motility uh, and uh, to check to rule out any motility disorder underlying the, uh, the obesity. And so in the cases of motility disorder, they do not do bariatric surgery. But so it's like a chain, no? It's the bariatric surgery that is uh, um, uh, showing an underlying motility disorder or there's the bariatric surgery that is the cause of the motility disorder. The fact is that nobody knows till now, so we really need data and to collect internationally in the multicentric fashion prospectively cases to understand. So because then we can have in trouble for mainly for GERD. Because poem is, is just the treatment. So, but what is really happening is still um, not clear. So, uh, generally, how long uh, until they uh, they have this achalasia? De they develop achalasia after the bariatric surgery? Is there any tendency yeah. or? Yeah, is again a good question. I don't have, again, a, a, a clear answer. The fact is that you can develop symptoms even after two months after surgery, but in that specific case where it's so, uh, so nearby the, the surgery, maybe there's a complication of the surgery, mm. like a stricture. You know, it's similar to after Nisifon duplication. If the symptoms of dysphagia is just two weeks or two months after surgery, maybe uh, there was something wrong in the surgical procedure or a complication of the surgical procedure. Yeah. But then when you have symptoms that is becoming after two years after surgery, so maybe there there's a motility disorder. And uh, again, as I was saying, we don't really know who, who, who start before, if the motility disorder or the surgery that you know was the cause of the motility disorder? This is this is fascinating a topic to me. Uh, I wonder. Do, I don't know the literature very well on this on this case. Maybe is there a difference between the rate of achalasia after sleeve gastrectomy versus Ruan Y bypass? And what about endoscopic sleeve? If if this is if we're seeing the same rate after endoscopic sleeve, then must be you know primary, not it yeah. must be an effect, not the cause. But yeah. if if, you're, if you don't see any after endoscopic sleeve, then maybe it's more to do with the surgery itself. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a good point, uh, but we'll need, I think, not only more data but more years uh, to understand yeah. because endoscopic sleeve is very recent, so. We'll see, but we must know because it can make the difference because you know that obesity is really increasing and all the, and also bariatric procedure is increasing. So we will facing yeah. all of us with a lot of this patient and we must understand what is gone there and what we have to do. So I look forward to your leadership on the international group uh, to study this uh, um, case. Thank you. <laughs> also, uh, I have a question to uh, Raina. I, um, in the 
uh, usual practice, we we sometimes encounter the EGJ AOO with uh without the um uh, without with the sim with symptoms. So I I kind of think that uh, the EGJ AOO may be one of the one form of achalasia. So can uh, what do you think about the idea? Uh, yes, I. But according, uh, yes, um, in according to the um, new classification of the Chicago classification, um, the new Chicago classification, with EGJO, there there still remains to be um some paracelsis, but could be also uh type LE uh LES. So I, with um, Minami Sensei's idea that it could be a type of achalasia, yes, I'm probably it could be, but. Um, according to the new classification, we also need the time barium mesopharam and or the flip. Uh, I have a question for for uh, for Raina and and maybe the whole panel actually. Raina, you mentioned that flip. You, you I saw a flip in one of your slides. The end of flip. Um, and uh, but and then the, the myotomy on the esophageal side in your case was ten centimeters. Um, do, do people, do you, go, do you vary the length of the esophageal myotomy based on what evidence? Do you do it based on the HRM? Do you base it on the visual, uh, visualization of contractions? Do you use the endoflip? How do you, or is it standard 10 centimeter for everybody? Um, because this is not the case I perform, um, uh, it's a case that performed by Dr. Grace. But sure. I think, yes, I believe that, um, it's more based on the contractions rather um, rather than the flip. But the reason why we included the flip on the slides because this is part of the new Chicago classification. But in practice, I believe the myotomy length um, depends on the contractions. Oh, okay. Uh, from my side, to answer to this question, the 10 centimeter esophageal myotomy is the minimum uh, length of the esophageal myotomy. I mean, and then I based uh, mainly uh, on um, patient symptoms. I refer to uh, chest pain. And uh, in that cases, or in cases of a non-standard achalasia for spastic disorders so, or for uh, motility disorders with uh, pain, I will go maybe farther with a longer, longer myotomy. So, but the 10 centimeter in the esophageal side is the minimum. And uh, yes, uh, for me, uh, to answer this question, uh, the length of myotomy, uh, we have seen that uh, high resolution myotomy that, do, that does not uh, solve all our problems because in the natural history, the things may be changed. So we have seen that many patients uh, have uh, relapse of achalasia in the part of non-myotomized uh, esophagus. So, uh, well, 10, 11, or 12 centimeters, which was uh, initially, uh, personally performed initially 10, 12 centimeters, was not sufficient, I think, because uh, the mask is uh, diseased and will uh, re-attack uh, again. So, I think that you can perform as long as uh, you can. At this time, I don't use overcube because overcube will um, uh, slow down the length of my order. For each action and for obstruction, we, can, we don't know what will, uh, will be developed in the future. So um, I think that uh, we cannot speak about length. It is uh, case by case, I think. Uh, longer myotomy is better because otherwise we have to uh, re-operate for the uh, part of myotomy who cannot, uh, or part of the who, who, who is not myotomized. Okay. So. Thanks Can very much. We have a yeah. comment from Professor Inoue about on that mm. length of the myotomy issue. Uh, you are muted. Yeah, I am muted, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you very much uh, to everybody. Great talks. Um, the uh, last last question from uh, Loberta is a uh, length of myotomy. Um, um, of course, uh, everybody knows the uh, uh, Chicago classification type one is uh, should be uh, we have to concentrate LES and the type two as well. 
and the type three extended. So the question is the patient has a chest pain. So uh, to uh, control the chest pain, um, mild extension, extended mild meat works or not? That's a question. So um, for example, in some patient in a type two achalasia, so uh, some, some patients series uh, complain the uh, chest pain. So, um, so of course, everybody knows uh, who care achalasia patients. So uh, most, uh, most of the pain is uh, coming uh, back to the, the up to the uh, behind the neck. That is a typical uh, pain uh, for the uh, acarasia patient. So in such a case, uh, uh, extended myotomy sometimes works. Um, so not, it's a very difficult to make it a data. So because the pain is a, uh, object, no, not objective, so subjective matter. So it's a very difficult uh, to make it uh, clear, but in our experience, uh, lovely, lovely, uh, 50 to 70% of the uh, pain, acarasia pain can be controlled by extended myotomy. But so, and the, uh, some of them, um, um, pain, so uh, that the strength of pain decreased after myotomy. So uh, potentially, so of course, you know, uh, but uh, uh, just uh, effective uh, to or 30% of the case series. So that is my opinion. So at any time we have to be carefully uh, diagnosis, uh, 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 select the indication uh, for such a patient. Thank you very much. I actually uh, agree with uh, Professor Inouye, and I, I have uh, several cases that um, with those uh, the chest pain will uh, will disappear would disappear in like two three months after the POEM procedure. So, I, in my in my opinion, uh, the uh, the abnormal movement of the the upper uh, middle is of middle. Esophagus, middle thoracic esophagus could be a uh, secondary change of from caused by the uh, dysfunction of the ileus. So I think uh, as long as it, the diagnosis is a galasia, the the uh, the main pathology can, should be in the in the ileus. So ileus releasing the ileus uh, may be the most important. Uh, thing in treating achalasia. That, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Well, so is there any other comments or? No, no, no. I'd like to comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to comment to everybody. So uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, three of you are uh, so great talk. So wonderful talk. Thank you so much. And the, uh, so first, Nikos uh, demonstrated a complex acarasia patient, and the uh, I, I totally agree. Um, uh, in the case of our uh, end stage acarasia, so our uh, so more than thirty years history, sometimes uh, 35, 40 years history, and the esophagus is a uh, totally dilated. So some patient receives a botox and a um, repeated balloon dilation. So in such a case, um, esophageal uh, lumen is a uh, huge dilated and also uh, totally uh, loss, totally loss of the esophageal uh, function. Uh, just a large, uh, like a reserver or something. So anyway, so food cannot pass through. So in such a case, um, even though our uh, poem is a minimal invasive treatment, so uh, we can try it, but the, uh, um, some of the case uh, uh, didn't work, doesn't work. So in such a case, so uh, esophagectomy, that, that is our uh, only solution to uh, control the patient uh, symptom. Yes, yeah, so in such a case, uh, repeated uh, uh, pneumonia and the uh, uh, aspiration pneumonia or some, some other, so, 
uh, life-threatening. So we have to move on to the uh, spachectomy. Uh, and the second, sir, uh, Nikos also mentioned about the uh, congenital ling. So that is the uh, very, very important uh, uh, case uh, uh, who performs a POEM procedure. So we have to know uh, in some patient, uh, it's a uh, uh, radiography, I, I mean, a barium swallow looks very similar to acarasia, but so some uh, patient had the uh, congenital stenosis. So in, su in such a case, a POEM procedure mm -hmm. uh, technically becomes very, very difficult because of the uh, uh, severe fibrosis. Sometimes very difficult to control, uh, uh, get the, um, finds a way in a submucosal space. So, but the other treatment also um, not so effective in such a case. So balloon dilation, uh, not working. So yeah, we can try, but they are not working. So I think uh, congenital esophageal stenosis is a, uh, we have to know well. So Liner and the uh, uh, Ikeda Sensei and Liner uh, already published, is that right? Uh, this April or May, uh, like that. So uh, we have published the uh, case series of uh, uh, 10, 10, 10, Eight are muted. You are muted, Liner. It's, uh, I think, six cases or seven. Uh, six case series. So it's a easy, easy differential diagnosis of the congenital um, stenosis. Congenital ling is a, the patient has the steel component of the peristasis in the high resolution manometry. And uh, also, um, they have. Um, Symptom onset is a their childhood. So that's a, another a very simple um, criteria uh, to uh, make clear. So uh, so we have to know uh, who have to uh, who performs a poem procedure have to know the disease of a congenital esophageal stenosis. And the uh, Loberta, thank you so much. Your great uh, talk. I I never. I never know uh, the post stream gastrectomy acarasia. I never know the disease entity. So uh, it's a good, a good, very good <laughs> uh, instruction for me. So, uh, but but the uh, uh, mechanism the patient becomes acarasia after sleep gastrectomy is uh, um, very difficult to uh, understand. So not yet a proven, uh, proven, but the uh, um, uh, so surgery uh, never touch the uh, esoph esophagus. So uh, Roberta, how do you explain the mechanism? So as uh, your uh, image uh, patient series, uh, it looks like acarasia. Uh, yeah. The yeah, the symptoms are definitely acarasia symptoms. Uh -huh. And uh, if we perform manometry and uh, radiogram, uh, all of everything is is uh, is like the achalasia patients. So definitely, uh -huh. they are classified as uh, achalasia patients, uh -huh. and they are treated as well. Uh, but the real mechanism is true, and you're completely right. The relationship I was saying that is unclear because we we are not still understanding what is going in this patient. So we need to deeply uh, check. Uh, and and understand in future, uh, and we will see more and more this patient because obesity is growing and uh, bariatric procedure is growing. So we need to understand, but we still don't know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, so far, we understand very well uh, about the uh, post sleep gastrectomy GERD. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. is well known. That yeah, is well known. Of and uh, I think we can understand very well because the gastric uh, volume becomes a small, so may happen the uh, reflux disease, but so acarasia. So uh, <laughs> so it's a, so uh, so of course in Japan we don't have not so many cases of uh, um, uh, bariatric surgery. So uh, so please 
European guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, finery um, uh, liner, uh, instead of uh, Grace, uh, Dr. Grace Santi, so uh, you presented a very nice, easy uh, uh, outflow abstraction. So I, I think the outflow abstraction in such a patient, uh, 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 esophagus uh, still has a peristalsis. So very good indication, very good indication for uh, uh, to a poem procedure. But, but, so uh, outflow obstruction is a it's a differential diagnosis. A congenital stenosis is a very important. So uh, outflow obstruction is a good indication for poem, but the uh, uh, congenital uh, esophageal stenosis, uh, the uh, congenital esophageal ring patient. So uh, we have to, it's an indication for poem, but we have to talk to the patient or patient family. It's a uh, 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 control, uh, uh, improve, improvement. Uh, the symptom is sometimes difficult. Yeah, so. So, so uh, three, of, three of you, so very nice, nice uh, <laughs> lectures. So I really appreciate it. And the, uh, of course, the uh, uh, Dr. Bu and the Dr. Minami, thank you very much for your nice uh, chairperson. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, yeah, so uh, Dr. Bu, if you have uh, some final remarks, please. <laughs> you think, close uh, the session. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sense to you, you have I, I thought it was a closing. Okay. Uh, but, uh, okay. Uh, what I wanted to say was already been said by Professor Inoue, everything. And then uh, I want to thank you all for the uh, informative lectures and uh, good friendship uh, lasting forever. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, and see you hopefully in the future face to face. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank thank you. Bye. Have a nice Bye. day. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you. For all of you.